Larry Carey and Steve Stone back in Montreal. We go into the ninth. Cubs are leading three to two. This is it. They hold that lead. They've won another division title. They're second in the last five years. Here's Salazar to lead it off. Third ball outside. Boy, they've had to beat a tough pit, a little pitcher out there in Dennis Martinez so far tonight. They would dearly love another insurance run here to give Maddox some daylight. Salazar gets out of the way. I don't know. I don't believe Dennis Martinez likes Salazar. He's thrown a lot of pitches up and in, a couple of fastballs. That was a curveball. And the only time Martinez has gotten hurt at all tonight has been when he's fallen behind hitters. And he's behind Salazar now 2-0. Two, oh. two balls, no strikes. There's a high fly ball. Grissom in center field. One out. And here's Dunstan. He's one out of three. Scored a run in the second when he was driven in by Rick Rona, who tripled. Don't go away, folks. You gotta go away, Harry. I've gotta get down in the locker room. I, was like, I don't care about you. I mean the people. <laughs> I want them to see all that we got planned for. <laughs> One out, nobody on the pitch. There's foul out of play, 0 oh and 1. There's Mark Grace. What a year he's had. Hitting 312. In among the best top five hitters of the league. Actually, is fourth. Clark leads by two over Gwynn. Smith, Lonnie Smith hitting 317. Mark Grace, 312. A strike call. 0 oh 2. There's Les Lancaster. What a job he has done since being called up when uh, Pat Perry went on the disabled list. I tell you, you, there's so many heroes on this ball club. It's really a team. It really and truly is a team victory. There's a pitch outside. You know, you look at these guys, Harry, and you write them down with the other teams in the league, and you look at the talent, and you say to yourself, Cubs can't contend. And then you put them all together as a team, and not only can they contend, but they've dominated their division all season. And you cannot say enough about Don Zimmer for creating this feeling, the esprit de corps, the charisma, whatever you want to, what word you want to use, whatever it is they have, it had a stem from the top. And it wasn't easy. I think the big thing he did was convincing everybody that it's a, this is a we game, not a I game. Here's a bouncing ball. Foley ought to throw him out. Close! He's out. I don't know. It looked like he beat it out. Two gone. Very close at first base. Foley ranging far to his left. Makes a good solid throw. Dunstan. They got him. But looked a, like they got him. Paul Rungi making the call. About a quarter of a step. Two men are out. Here's Rick Grona. You cannot say enough for the young catchers and the marvelous, in fact, remarkable job they've both done. You might as well say all three young catchers because Damon Berryhill was off to a great start, hitting the ball, throwing the ball. Unfortunately, was disabled. I won't play until next year. There's a third ball in there. One on one. <laughs> Where's Josh? Where's Josh? Now, Harry, when I go down there, and you're going to do the ninth. I want you to hold him right there. Don't worry about it. Never fear Harry's here. <laughs> one ball, one strike, two out. The pitch. Ground ball. Owen throws the first. One, two, three. We go into the bottom of the ninth. 
the Cubs three outs away from winning the division title. Returning Tuesday, October 3rd on Channel 9. So I've been with this bank 10 years, and I asked them about a loan for some new equipment. Oh, the dreaded loan committee. <coughs> Take it off, Jeff. Oh, they've left me twisting in the wind three weeks now. You ought to broom those guys. Get yourself a new bank, that's what I did. Oh, nice. And? No. Oh, I like them. I always give you a definite yes. Or no. Responsiveness, one of many reasons more mid-sized Chicago area businesses rely on American National than any other bank. American National, the bank for business. Not only can this ticket get you instant cash, it can also get you on a TV game show. The Illinois State Lottery's new $100,000 fortune hunt instant game. Your ticket to fortune and fame. The 89 Cubs are brought to you in part by Pepsi Cola General Bottlers of Chicago. Pepsi, a generation ahead. Harry Carey back in Montreal, but going into the bottom of the ninth, the Cubs lead. Three to two. The Cardinals already have been beaten. The victory means it's all over, and the Cubs are the champs of their division. Here's Tom Foley to lead it off. Steve Stone and Dan Rowan are all down in the clubhouse already. So stay with us. You're gonna you're gonna see all the action and all the fun. Here's Foley, the pitch. There's a strike call. Get this guy out. There's the, look at that. There is Dwight Smith that's sitting next to Jerome Walton. Remember, Foley got the hit. In the ninth inning, the led to the tying run last night, and they won in the tenth. So get this guy out. There's Scott Sanderson. To his left, Mike Bilecki. One ball, one strike. There it is. That's what he did last night. A single to run. And Foley. Boy, we can't get him out. He is now 11 out of 29 against the Cub pitching. For the against the league is only 228. The tying run is on at first base. They'll probably use Otis Nixon to run or Rex Hudler to run for Tom Foley. It's Hudler, I think. No, there is Otis Nixon. Otis Nixon coming out. He stole second last night to get in scoring position <laughs> to get in scoring position Rick Rona behind the plate now ready Nelson Santovania he drove in a tying run in the sixth on a sacrifice fly. He throws over the first runner back. Joe Girardi warming up in the bullpen. Is this you? Yeah, that's him. You want to go where? Doug DeCenzo's in left field. Wins in the center. Dawson in right. There's a toss and runner back. Cubs lead 
three to two. Three outs away by the Expo. Have the tying run at first. Tom Foley. Now Otis Nixon running for Tom Foley who got the hit. Now here comes Girardi in to replace Rick Rona. Girardi is going to replace Rick Rona. They think Girardi has a slightly better throwing arm. And Rona gets a nice hand as he reaches a dugout from all of his teammates. Otis Nixon has swiped 36 bases. He's been thrown out 12 times. And lead by Nixon. Pitch out, not going anywhere. Or watch the lead Nixon gets. <laughs> That time it looked like he had both feet on the carpet. He got the front foot on there. There's a strike call. A ball and a strike. Boy, what I'd like to see is a ground ball to either Dunstan or Sandberg. One ball, one strike. Nixon a lead. He started a throw, but he, he had stepped off the rubber. One ball, one strike. Nixon a lead. The ball is bunted. The only play is first base. They tag Santa Vena. The time went at second with one out. And here is Spike Owen due to be the hitter. But they were going to have a pitch hitter. There you look in the Cub dugout. Joe Altabelli checking the score sheet. Maddox. Maybe the hitter. And that's who it is. Wallace Johnson hitting 277. As a pinch hitter, 14 out of 57. He's a switch hitter. He's hit 301 left-handed. Only 158 right-handed. So he is a better hitter from the left side. He's on a Gary in the How do you feel? I think was his first question. I, you could almost lip read uh, Greg Maddox said, I'm all right. He wants Maddox going for his 19 victory. And we're going to have a new pitcher. Mitch Williams will be coming in. And we'll be back following this message. Now, when two lovers woo... Strap this on. They should say, I love you. I hate you. Are you as turned on as I am? More. But on this, you can rely. Mr. Malone has his brains caught in his zipper. Sam and Diane make sparks fly. Some things only get better as time goes by. Cheers. Play it again, Sam. Aren't they a wonderful couple? Weeknights at 6 on Channel 9. 
Cubs fans, mark your calendar for January 26th through January 28th, 1990, as those are the dates for the fifth annual Cubs convention. This festive weekend will feature player autograph and photograph booths, question and answer sessions with Cubs players and executives, hitting clinics, souvenir stands, batting cages, and much more. Be sure you're included in all the fun. To make your reservations, call the Cubs Convention Hotline at 312-951-CUBS. This is Mitch Williams. He's trying for his 36th save. He gave up the game when he hit. The defeat was charged to Scott Sanderson last night. He'll be facing... Wallace Johnson, we gave you the stat on Johnson, a much better hitter left-handed, and that's probably why Zimmer brought in the left-hander to force Johnson to bat right-handed. Out of Gary, Indiana, Wallace Johnson. Hold everything. Two outs from the division title, but the tying runs at second. Wait, they're bringing... Wait a minute now, did they... They made a, made a mistake. Fitzgerald walked up there. Had they already announced? Had they announced Jordan uh, Johnson? Johnson's a hitter. I don't know what uh, Mike Fitzgerald was doing, but they call him back because I think Johnson already been a, announced as a pinch hitter. Two home run. He whirled, does Mitch Williams, but no play. He's made six of them, Mitch. He's been charged with four balls. He had a cut, he missed. Oh, I'm sorry. One ball, one strike, one out. Johnson. 31 hits, three doubles, one triple, two homers. He fouls it back. He's ahead of them. One and two. Wallace Johnson batting for Spike Owen. The crowd quiet. Look at the Cubs. He whirled again. Look at that Cub dugout. You, you can see the tension. Look at the Les Lancaster. Time call. Dan Rowan and Steve Stone already in the clubhouse. They've beaten the players in, naturally. One ball, two strikes. Fouls it back. And boy, I tell you, Nixon, I think half third base stolen. Fortunately, Johnson swung and fouled it back. You see now, it's paramount that they don't weaken their defense by trying to hold Nixon close to second. They don't want to give him an added expanse of territory to hit through. But Sean Dunstan is trying to hold him as close as he possibly can. The pitch. Almost threw it away.
Johnson's only fan 12 times. Two balls, two strikes. Two strikes. He's gearing himself up for fastball. There's Rick Sutcliffe, Les Lancaster, Paul Osmacher. Three balls, two strikes. He whirls, no play. Otis Nixon, the runner at second. strikes, a pitch. There's a high pop fly. Sandberg's there, makes the catch in short right. And here he comes running back into the infield. Only one out to go. Boy, if you've got a weak heart. Turn the set off. The rest of you stay with us. Go comes go. They're not going anywhere but the dressing room. Sandberg, his 86th straight errorless game, took care of Wallace Johnson's top five. Mike Fitzgerald would be the pinch hitter. The pitch, he fouls it back. Fitzgerald is batting 240. As a pinch hitter, he's three out of eight. One strikes the count. Mitch Williams going for his 36th save. Look at that dugout. Nobody can sit down. 0 and 1. There he goes, stealing third. He swings and he misses. And Girardi, knowing that Nixon had a good lead, didn't make a play. Now he's got to be careful of the wild pitch. Oh, and two to the count. One strike away from the division title. Look at that dugout. Everybody's on their feet. Every, all the Cub fans are on their feet. Oh, and two to the count. A little low, ball one. One ball, two strikes, two out. The tying run at third. Hold everything. The beads as well. One ball, two strikes, the pitch. Hey, Cubs win the division. Cubs win the division. Cubs win the division. Fitzgerald is out on strike. Look at that scene on the field. Underneath all that humanity is Mitch Williams. Look at you talk about a mass of happy humanity. Paul Kilgus, Mitch Williams. Fitzgerald struck out. Watch his reaction on the strikeout. Now they give it to him. Hey, look at that. Look at that. You think he's a happy young man? Look at Kilgus and Mark Grace. You'll see them all in a moment. On the other side of the field, there is the Expos dugout. 
They are not very happy. The, what's that? The ecstasy of victory and the agony of defeat. Let's watch it again. Watch him. Watch us. He just won a high jump championship. There's a seat for you. Watch the bench before. There they go. They know he's out on strength. Look at that. Beautiful camera work. Beautiful television, Arnie, and your crew. Let's switch down to Steve, who's in the dressing room for a moment. Harry, they're just about ready to come in. They're battening down the hatches here in the locker room. They're going to go crazy in just a minute. Still everything they're happening on the toes. field. Now they're starting to filter in. This is a tension-filled locker room before that last pitch. Right now, they're standing around with nobody here waiting for the onslaught. And the champagne is just coming out, what Arnie. All right. Okay, take it well, back, we'll Harry, and come on back more. a little later. We'll be there for a long time. You see. We'll be back with the highlights following this message. <laughs> You're looking in the clubhouse right now. There's Dwight Smith. All right, here's the Budweiser play of the game. This is a play that clinched the division title for the Cub. Mike Fitzgerald went around for strike three. And that's that. The Budweiser play of the game, the totals quickly. For the Cubs, three runs, eight hits, one error. Greg Maddox, the winner, he now has 119 and lost 12. Mitch Williams got the save, his 36th of the year. For the Expo, two runs, seven hits, one error. The loser, Dennis Martinez, he now has won 16 and lost seven. I'm going to go down stairs too. See you from there. So long, everybody. Stay tuned for the post-game show in the dugout in the clubhouse in a moment. Our next telecast will be tomorrow night at 6 o'clock Chicago time. The Cubs take on the Montreal Expos here on Channel 9. Our executive producer director, Arnie Harris. Final score, the Cubs win, win their division. Harry Carey from Montreal. So long, everybody.